Now, the global pandemic has turned the business world on its head. Managers and business leaders have had to become more agile and sensitive to the needs of people in their organizations, many of whom have been working remotely for almost a year already. Now, author and podcast host Mimi Nicklin uh, believes business organizations that lead with empathy, empathy rather, see a turnaround in productivity, morale, and just all-round happiness. Nicklin's debut book, Softening the Edge, focuses on empathy in business, marketing, and leadership, and she joins us via Zoom from Dubai. Mimi, thank you so much for joining us this morning, this morning South African time, uh, as it were. Um, when I, I saw the focus point of your book, I immediately thought of a, a famous quote of uh, former American President uh, Barack Obama many years ago, uh, and I think I've got this correct. There's a lot of talk about the federal deficit, but I think we should talk more about our empathy de deficit, which was really a hallmark of his presidency at the time, especially in comparison to what was to follow him in the White House. Do you believe that we do have an empathy gap? And has what we have gone through over the last year seen a narrowing of that gap? Absolutely. Yes, good morning. We do. We have had uh, an empathy deficit that's been going on for 30 years, in fact. So three decades of declining empathy levels, and there has been a vast impact across society. And you're right, that quote from President Obama was from 2006. So nearly 15 years ago, we knew of this. Have we seen it closing in the last year? I would say in some ways, certainly the awareness is high. So when I started on this empathy journey, there was very little conversation about this in the media, the business world, the public domain. That has changed. There is a higher awareness of the need for empathy in the world and specifically within our organizations and even more specifically mm -hmm. as we recover from these times. So, yes, there is a higher awareness and that is the beginning of all empathy. So steps in the right direction. The focus point of a lot of the coaching work that you do, uh, do um, uh, uh, speaks about wanting a world of work where, which is more empathetic, valuable and sustainably healthy. Now, some people yes. would say, well, Mimi, you're smoking your socks. It's all well and good to want that when you've got all your staff under one roof. But this is a pandemic. We've got staff that are working remotely. We've had to consider salary cuts. We've had to consider staff cuts, as it were. Uh, what do you say to your detractors? Mm. Absolutely. The reality is this is not just my opinion. This is based on data uh, predominantly out of the U.S., but from all around the world that shows that when we have higher emotional intelligence in the workplace, and yes, that can be handled via Zoom or any of these platforms that you communicate on today, we see all kinds of business indicators go up. Performance, output, innovation, creativity, um, profit per capita. So profit literally by head. So no, I've not spoken my socks. Um, <laughs> this is proven by data and it is definitely possible. At the end of the day, empathy is about perspective taking and however you communicate with your staff, whatever means you're doing that, asking them, tell me something about your day that I didn't know mm. or tell me how you're seeing your role today and how can I help? These are conversations that can happen across any platform, real life or virtual. So absolutely it's possible and absolutely it's helping businesses already all over the world. Do you think that this little stereotype that um, showing empathy is a sign of weakness? I think it's definitely a stereotype. The reality is empathy is not a soft skill. Um, it's hard to nurture and it's extremely hard to find. So this is not something that's soft or emotional. Um, this is a really sort of solid, firm business skill set that, as I said, has really deep business indicators attached to it. Now, you've written a book called Softening the Edge. It's a bestseller in the UK, the USA and the UAE already. Do you think that you, uh, this shows that there is a hunger for the way we do things to change or the way we treat uh, staff and uh, our, our, our colleagues as it were to change? I think absolutely. As, as I said, when I started this journey, the media was not covering empathy, um, especially in the business world, and that has changed. Indeed, the book sales have shown that. I've been amazed at the vast array of people buying the book from sort of more junior to C-suite levels and obviously across HR and startups, all kinds of people that have got in touch with me. So I think there is definitely a higher awareness and need state. And the reality is the employees today are demanding this. Mm. So the leadership teams are having to adapt. And as we see that sort of cross-generational workforce coming through, there's never been a time when mutual understanding has been more important. There's a lot of conversation about diversity and inclusion, more inclusive mm. workplaces. How are we ever going to achieve that? if we don't first understand each other. So absolutely, there is a change happening and people are, are following that journey.
The book is called Softening the Edge. She also does a, a, a podcast called Secrets of the Gap. And there's also uh, an online show called Empathy for Breakfast. And the author and the presenter of that is Mimi Nicklin, who has joined us now from Dubai. Thank you so much for your time this morning.